Most people starting out with editing will think of transitions as being a special effect that, well, I suppose transitions from one clip to another. You see here I've got a couple of clips, but they're on different tracks, so I suppose I could put them down one on top of the other, maybe trim across a little bit, and then if I go to my transitions, video transitions, maybe I could put a dissolve in between the two. And that works fine. Let me just turn off my snapping. And there we go, I've got a transition. But what's happening here is I've got the same transition out as I have coming in. And that may not be what I want. I might want to have two different transitions applying. So I'm just going to undo a couple of steps here. And I'm going to apply two different transitions with the clips on different tracks. This is just a little thing, but it's one of those things to bear in mind as a creative option. So I'm going to have my well, actually, I'm not going to use a cross dissolve out. I'm going to go for a dip to black for this clip underneath in the background. And if I just put my snapping back on, I'll line these up. Uh, there we go. And if I turn off my video too, you can see it's just going to fade down to black. That's fine. Now I'm going to have a different transition for my foreground. And I'm going to go for something pretty, pretty obvious. So let's have a spin in, a 3D spin, a pretty dramatic effect. So you can see now I've got two completely different transition effects applying at the same time. And let's just say that's my vision. Let's just say for some reason I feel like that's what I need to do as a director. But I'm not too happy with the hard edges on this effect. So I'm going to go into my effects. I'm just going to type in rough here. I'm going to get this rough and edges effect. And I'm going to throw that on the clip in the foreground. Now ordinarily this effect is to give you jagged edges if I crank up the border size on this clip, you can see, if I go full screen with it, you get this kind of uh, textured organic look to the edge. And there's uh, an evolution control so you can animate that and uh, you can make it pretty fiery. Let's just undo that. What I'm gonna do is drop the border right down. I'm gonna drop this, in fact, let me get my pen. I'm gonna drop this right down to zero. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the sharpness here. I want this to be totally smooth. And if I just go full screen, you can see this is now giving me a really strong softening. And I'm going to just drop the scale right down to zero, no fractal influence. So what I'm producing here, if I just come out a little bit, is a pure soft edge around this video. And then I'm just going to use the border. Let me resize a little bit. There we go. I'm going to use the border control to define how much softening I have on the edge of this video. So when we get to about there, I suppose, is fine. Remember, we're just talking about my creative vision. This is just what I decide I want to do. So again, now if I drag through this, we've got a fade to black, and then we've got this smoothing, and then we're going full screen. Now, just to illustrate what's happening with this foreground, I'm going to make a color mat. So let me go to my project panel, click on the new button, color mat, OK, and I'm going to give this some uh, a bright red color. Let's call this uh, red mat. And then I'm going to put that under this clip on the timeline. And you can see I've got a bit of a problem because that soft edge is still applied. It's not that clear against the black background of the timeline, but it is there. So what I want to do is keyframe that rough edges effect so that it becomes a kind of transition in its own right. I'm going to just pick maybe just after the transition effect so I can get hold of this if I want to adjust it later. And I'm going to add a keyframe for the border thickness. Then I'm going to use the mini timeline inside the effect controls panel, and I'm going to drag to the very beginning of the clip and add another keyframe. So now I've got two keyframes set up. I know it's kind of dinky, but there they are, where they've both got the same value for this effect. So there's our soft edge. You can see at the bottom, and it's kind of subtle, but it's there. In fact, maybe I'll make this a bit more obvious. I'm just selecting these two keyframes, and I'm, I'm going to crank up the softening so you can see that a bit more clearly. In fact, let me make these a little bit, uh, a little bit more obvious. Let's push that up to about 200. And uh, let's go back to the first keyframe and do the same. So this is just a bit more visible. You can see I've got a quite a big soft edge there. So now all I need to do is go to the last keyframe here and set the border thickness to zero. And now I've got a transition in the form of the spin and I've got a transition in the form of that border. 
that soft edge, which by the time I get to the end of the transition effect is now gone and I've got hard clean edges on the video. One downside with this, of course, is that I've got a color correction effect on here, a fast color corrector, but I've now got a red bar all the way through this clip because the rough and edges effect is not a CUDA enabled one. So I'm just gonna go a little bit after this, maybe a little bit after that keyframe, and I'm going to just add a cut. I can press Control or Command K, or I can use the razor tool. And now on the second clip, because I've separated this clip into two parts, I'm going to select and delete the rough and edges effect. I don't need it because I've already got the effect by the end of this clip. Oops, let me select it. I've already got that effect finishing. It's got a zero border before the cut. So there's no real benefit in having the effect on the rest of the clip. It's not being applied anyway. So that's a way of applying multiple transition effects and using a regular special effect as a transition in Premiere Pro CS6.